African Samurai, the true story of Yasuke, a legendary black warrior in feudal Japan, by Thomas Lockley, is a historical recounting of the life of Yasuke, an African man who became a samurai in 16th century Japan. The narrative is set against the backdrop of a feudal Japan in the midst of warring states and political upheaval, with Oda Nobunaga, a powerful daimyo, seeking to unify Japan under his rule. Yasuke's journey began in his early life in Africa, around the 1550s to the 1560s, where he was believed to have been born with the name Yasufe in Mozambique, or Sudan according to some accounts. He was possibly a member of the Makua ethnic group. His early life remains shrouded in mystery, and certain aspects of his origins are unclear, including how he ended up leaving his homeland. He was known to have been taken from Eastern Africa as a child or young man, enslaved, and ended up in the service of Jesuit missionaries. Under the Jesuits, Yasuke traveled extensively across Asia, ultimately arriving in Japan in the 1570s as the servant of Alessandro Valignano, an Italian Jesuit visitor who oversaw Jesuit missions in the Indies. Yasuke's presence in Japan caused quite a stir due to his height and dark skin, which were unusual and intriguing to the Japanese people, to the extent that Nobunaga himself heard of the black man and expressed a desire to meet him. When Nobunaga met Yasuke, he was initially skeptical that Yasuke's skin color was real and even had him scrubbed, thinking the black might be ink. Upon realizing it was his natural complexion, Nobunaga was impressed and took a strong liking to Yasuke. He saw potential in Yasuke beyond his service to the Jesuits and took him on as a retainer. Yasuke quickly won Nobunaga's trust and learned the Japanese language and customs, integrating himself into Japanese society. As Yasuke's relationship with Nobunaga grew stronger, he was eventually elevated to the rank of a samurai, a status rarely, if ever, afforded to a foreigner, and certainly not to someone of African origin. This unprecedented event marked Yasuke as one of the most unique figures in the history of Japan. As a samurai, Yasuke was given his own residence, a stipend, and possibly had servants and warriors under his command. Yasuke served Nobunaga during a tumultuous period as the daimyo continued his campaign to consolidate power in Japan. One of the key events in which Yasuke played a role was the Honoji Incident in 1582. During this conflict, a treacherous general, Akechi Mitsuhide, rebelled against Nobunaga. Nobunaga was staying at the Honoji Temple in Kyoto when Mitsuhide's forces attacked. In the ensuing chaos, it's believed that Yasuke bravely fought by Nobunaga's side, demonstrating his loyalty and combat skills as a samurai. How Nobunaga met his end remains a subject of some debate, with some accounts suggesting that he committed seppuku, a form of ritual suicide, while others suggest he may have been killed in the fighting. Yasuke survived the confrontation and managed to deliver Nobunaga's head to his son, ensuring that it did not fall into enemy hands. He then joined the forces of Nobunaga's retainer and successor, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. However, Hideyoshi viewed Yasuke differently than Nobunaga had. Given the norms of the time and place, a foreign-born African samurai was an anomaly and could be perceived as a reminder of Nobunaga's often unorthodox and radical approach to rule. Thus, following a battle in which Hideyoshi emerged victorious, Yasuke was captured. Hideyoshi treated Yasuke not as a samurai, but as a foreign or exotic curiosity, and decided that he should not be killed, as was often the fate of a defeated samurai. According to some accounts, Yasuke was sent to the Jesuit mission in Kyoto, and what happened to him after that is largely unknown, with no records detailing the rest of his life. Lockley's reconstruction of Yasuke's life is based on a careful examination of historical records, including Jesuit documentation, letters, local Japanese accounts, and the limited records that mention Yasuke by name or reference. Given the scarcity of hard facts and primary sources about Yasuke, the books also delve into the broader historical context of the period, giving us insights into the dynamics of feudal Japan, the role of Europeans and Christianity during this time, and the nature of samurai life. While the book focuses primarily on the extraordinary narrative of Yasuke's life and how he overcame incredible odds to rise to a position of respect and power, it also touches upon broader themes such as the global nature of the world, even in the 16th century, 
the fluidity and complexity of race relations in different historical and cultural contexts and the phenomenon of cultural assimilation and identity. In African Samurai, Lockley paints a picture of Yasuke as a figure of strength, determination, and dignity. Through the lens of Yasuke's life, readers gain a deeper understanding of the cultural and historical ties that exist between Africa and Asia, the universality of the human experience, and the powerful notion that an individual's courage and character can transcend the boundaries of race and origin. The book serves not only as a biographical account of an extraordinary individual, but also as an exploration of the interconnectedness of the world during a time when global connections were just beginning to take shape. Yasuke's story, as told by Lockley, is thus a tribute to the remarkable journey of an African man who crossed continents and cultures and whose legacy has persisted as a symbol of the diverse and multifaceted narratives that contribute to our understanding of world history. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.